Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Let's go ahead and get tonight's session started. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. And um, just like I start every session, I want to thank everybody that's actively participating in the um, Seven Day Fruit Inside a Challenge. Um, everyone's ha everyone has been doing a really, really good job of uploading their pictures, staying the course, documenting their journeys. And I just want to make sure I take my hat off and just congratulate each and every one of you guys that's been just stepping up to the plate and um, partaking in your own healing. So <clears throat> definitely hats off to you. And tonight's class, we're just going to continue moving forward with understanding more about the minerals and the vitamins that are all tied into um, high blood pressure. And that way we can um, continue to get control of this monster and make sure that we're able to manage our blood pressures and build our bodies up so we can eliminate the need for pharmaceutical medications. So um, if you have your um, your ebook, you know, if you have another device, go ahead and pull it up. I have mine here on this tablet right here. That way I can continue to go through um, some of the different processes that we can continue to understand some things and just basically um, just move forward and gain better understanding and just continue to manage this issue. Um, so as we wait for a little bit more people to get started, I uh, just want to let you know these healthy eating, active living t-shirts are still available. Um, all the proceeds go to supporting the group to help me continue to make more content along with uh, one of these special, um, along with this special project that I have coming up that's centered around some of the things that I want to do in the group. So the healthy eating, active living t-shirts, they're available, just there's two different styles, healthy eating, active living, and then we have another one with the branded logo on it. You can find it in the link that's listed somewhere up here. You might see it when you guys chime in. That way you can um, pick up a t-shirt, support the community, and keep things going. Um, and, <clears throat> and another announcement, I'm just going to give it to you guys real quick before I release it to everyone, everyone else. So I just got back the proof copy of my book. So I've been working on this book for about two years now, probably a little bit more, but I just got back the proof copy and um, I'm going through it, making sure I, making sure there's no typos, everything is edited properly. And um, this book is ready to, pretty much ready to be released. I've been working on this book for a few years, uh, just got the proof back. Um, I'm happy and excited about it. Uh, it's full of all the information that I teach, all the tactics, all the strategies, everything that I break down when it comes down to understanding high blood pressure. That way you can get better control and a better understanding of just your body as a whole and everything that you're, that you're dealing with. So the high blood pressure breakdown physical copy is, um, is gonna be released any day now pretty much. Uh, a couple people have already pre-ordered them and um, your, your copy is going to be shipped out and mailed out to you by the 24th. But it's going to go on um, actual release any day now. And um, basically, for everybody that's in the group, I'll make sure that you have the opportunity to um, purchase, purchase this book as well. So this is definitely one of, this is one of those reads that if you're dealing with high blood pressure, this is going to be able to help you connect the dots and understand more about it and progress through this whole, this whole issue and get to the root cause of the problem. So we'll dive back into this book a little bit later on, but I just wanted to share that with you guys because I'm very, very excited about this release. And um it's happy. Like it's my first. Uh, I'm a, I'm officially an author now. I wrote a ton of other ebooks, but now I actually got a physical copy. So I'm actually pretty happy about that. Um, so tonight we're gonna be diving right back into um, into the the ebook, the Seven Day Fruit and Salad Challenge. We're gonna be diving right back into this ebook. That way we can pick up where we left off at from last class on. Tuesday because we didn't have one Thursday on Wednesday. So we pick up right where we left off from last cast on Tuesday and then uh, continue to gain more of an understanding. Um, if anyone have any questions, feel free to drop them right inside of the chat. That way, as I breeze through these uh, different topics, when it's time for the question and answer and sex, the, the question se section of this of this class, I'll, I'll have the questions already ready and lined up for me. That way I could just roll through them, answer any questions that you guys are having, and just be able to uh, continue to support each and every one of you guys the best that I can. So um, now we're going to be talking about the antioxidants. We talked about potassium, magnesium, uh, zinc already. Now we're going to move in. We talked about potassium, magnesium, zinc, and calcium already. 
Now we're gonna move into the antioxidant and then we're gonna round things off with understanding sodium. So we're gonna talk about these antioxidants, understand the roles that they play and why it's so, so important that you make sure that you're including foods in your diet that's high in antioxidants. That way they can do the job that they need to do and tilt the scale in your favor when it comes down to managing your blood pressure. <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and read through. Matter of fact, I'm just drink a little coconut water real quick. There we go. <clears throat> Here we go. So we're going to dive into this antioxidant. So antioxidants play a crucial role in regulating blood pressure and supporting overall cardiovascular health. These powerful compounds help neutralize harmful free radicals in the body, which can cause oxidative stress and contribute to inflammation and damage to blood vessels. By reducing oxidative stress and inflammation, antioxidants help maintain the integrity and flexibility of blood vessels, promoting healthy blood flow and optimum blood pressure levels. So understanding that antioxidants, well understand this, that there's like a war going on inside of your body, each and every one of us, no matter what condition that we're dealing with. And this war on a certain level is being played out by free radicals and antioxidants. Now, there's always gonna be free radicals in your body and your body naturally produces some antioxidants. But it's very, very important that you give your body the antioxidants that it needs so it, can over, so it can overcome and overwhelm these free radicals and keep them to a, min, to a minimum. Because when free radicals are in the body, they start to produce oxidative stress. And this oxidative stress is very damaging to the arteries and the blood vessels, and it causes complications as they continue to build up. So it's important that you get enough antioxidants in the body to keep these free radicals in, in check to prevent these antioxidants, to prevent these... Um, to prevent the uh, increase in oxidative stress that's going to be damaging to the blood vessels because understanding that oxidative stress it destroys the innermost lining of your blood vessels which is called your endothelial cells so the innermost lining of the blood vessels running all throughout your body this is the endothelial cells which make up the endothelium system and the endothelium system is pretty much like the protector or the guardian of your cardiovascular system so your, your the endothelium system protects your whole cardiovascular system. It controls and has multiple functions to keep these things, to keep pretty much your whole cardiovascular system in check. But when oxidative stress occurs, it starts to wear away at these endothelial cells. And as these, as these cells start to break down, they start to lose functions. And when they um, one of their jobs is to produce the uh, nitric oxide to allow for the blood vessels to dilate. And when these blood vessels can't dilate properly, it causes the heart to work harder. And now you start to see an increase in your blood pressure. So it's important that we understand the role of antioxidants when it comes to managing your free radicals and preventing this oxidative stress from occurring. So certain antioxidants such as vitamin C, vitamin E, and flavonoids have been studied for their potential blood pressure lowering effects. These antioxidants may enhance nitric oxide production, a molecule that helps relax blood vessels resulting in improved blood flow and reduced blood pressure. So the way that these antioxidants help when it comes down to um, nitric oxide is that they help stimulate the endothelial cells. And when these endothelial cells are able to be stimulated and able to get everything that they need, they produce more nit nitric oxide. And all it does is help those blood vessels open up a lot wider and the blood can flow through a lot easier because there's more space and less resistance. Less resistance means a lower blood pressure. And this all works in favor when it comes down to improving your overall cardiovascular health. While antioxidants alone may not be may not be a standalone solution for managing high blood pressure, they are an they are an important component of a balanced and nutritious diet that promotes overall cardiovascular health. It's recommended to incorporate a wide range of antioxidant-rich foods into your meals and consult with a healthcare professional for further advice when it comes to maintaining a healthy lifestyle and managing blood pressure efficient, efficiently. So, the main thing that you guys should pick up from this is eating more foods that are rich in antioxidants. And this is a very, very simple list, a very easy list that you can um, 
that you can incorporate in your diet, and many of us have already been doing so. So here's a list of antioxidant-rich foods categor categorized from fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Um, fruits high in antioxidants, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, and cranberries. All of your berries are going to be high in antioxidants. That is the highest group with the most antioxidants. So having a variety of a variety of berries each and every day is going to give you the fiber, the water, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, and the antioxidants included to help boost up your body and give it everything that it needs. Because remember, that battle that's going on inside of your body between these antioxidants and these free radicals, you need to be winning when it comes down to these antioxidants. You should have so many... Uh, uh, my phone just clicked off. Somebody just called me. If you guys can uh, hear me a little bit. I hope I didn't lose you guys. If you guys can hear me, just put a one inside of the chat. I want to make sure my phone just uh just clicked off. But um, I think um. Okay, I'm I'm here. I'm sorry about that. If you guys can hear me, just let me know. My phone just clicked off. I want to make sure that you guys can still hear me, so I can keep going through this. All right, I'm seeing some ones come through, so we're good. We're good. All right. Whew, goodness gracious. So um, forgot where I was at. Oh, so. When it comes down to uh, antioxidants, you need to make sure that your body has enough antioxidants to tilt the scale in your, in your favor when it comes down to this battle that's happening between the, um, the antioxidants and the free radicals. You got more antioxidants, more, more antioxidants in the system. It's going to overwhelm those free radicals and keep that oxidative stress to a minimum. And when that oxidative stress is at a minimum, that um, the blood vessels are not getting damaged. And the new, I don't answer the first time. Come on, you guys don't, come on, don't do it like that. You're going to make me blocky. Uh, <laughs> uh, so when the oxidative stress, when the free radicals are, when the, <laughs> when the antioxidants are able to overwhelm the free radicals and keep the oxidative stress to a minimum, what ultimately happens is that um, now the oxidative stress isn't able to cause the damage throughout the, um, throughout the body and your endothelium. All right, here we go. All right, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna do this one more time and check in with you guys. Uh, can, you, can you guys pick up on me right now? Uh, if you can hear me and see me clearly without any uh, interruptions or any breakdowns, just put a one inside of the chat. That way I could keep going and um, make sure that, um, we can continue this, this session without any interruption. So if you can hear me and see me clearly, um, feel free to just let me know and uh, we'll go from there. Let's see what we got. All right, I see you, Ms. Nettles. Thank you for that one inside of the chat. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep going and um, <laughs> keep moving forward. And yeah, back to it, Anti antioxidants. It's all about making sure that you have them there to tilt the scale in your favor when it comes down to keeping the oxidative stress to a minimum and giving the endothelial cells what they need to dilate properly and um, uh, make sure the blood vessels are nice and flexible to do everything that they need to do. Uh, so again, back to the list of foods that are rich in antioxidants, uh, berries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, cranberries, all of your berries are gonna be very, very high in your antioxidants and be able to provide you with everything that you need when it comes down to uh, fighting off free radicals and stimulating the endothelial cells so they can do their job at the, at the highest level. Next up is gonna be your citrus fruits, oranges, grapefruits, lemons, limes. All of those are gonna give you your vitamin C's and, and your vitamin E and all those things there. Those nutrients are going to be very, very powerful for doing the same thing. Those are your same antioxidants that's going to just continue to elevate the, the systems of the body and allow them to function at the highest levels. Next up is going to be apples, uh, cherries, pomegranates, grapes, kiwis, watermelon, papayas, mangoes, and avocados. All those, all those foods are rich in antioxidants. Uh, there are a few others on the list as well that are high in antioxidants, but the main thing is you just want to eat an abundance of them. That way, when you eat an abundance of them, you know, you get a little bit from here, a little bit there. You know, you get a combination of the different types of antioxidants 
That way, you know, you have a variety of, of um, nutrients that are in the body that are working in your favor to help promote health and healing uh, on, a, on a grand scale. When it comes down to vegetables high in antioxidants, the first one is going to be spinach, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, your bell peppers, the red, yellow, and the orange ones. Um, the green ones have antioxidants too, but the ones with the more colors are ten, tend to be a little bit higher. Uh, tomatoes, carrots, sweet potatoes, beets onions, garlic, artichokes, all of those are going to be high in antioxidants that are good at fighting off those free radicals and allowing for the body to heal, rejuvenate, and uh, function at, a, at, a, at, a high, at its highest level. Uh, when it comes down to nuts and seeds that are high in antioxidants, almonds, walnuts, pistachios, pecans, Brazil nuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds, all those seeds are great to have especially if you mix them up in like a little bag or a jar and make some nice trail mix with a combination of them or even if you're using them as toppers on top of your salad sometimes those are all good ways to get more antioxidants and allow for your body to um just get the nutrients that it needs when it comes down to um to managing your blood pressure now one thing again it's not just all about antioxidants. There's other vitamins and minerals and nutrients that play a role in this cycle, but antioxidants are a key contributor as well. Because as we, as we talk about this in all of our other classes, it's not just one thing that's going to fix your blood pressure problem. You have to understand that it's a combination of things. It's an effort in a form of whole foods and an active lifestyle that's going to allow for you to overcome your blood pressure issues. It's not just a quick fix by just eating more blueberries or strawberries or whatever. It's not, that's not, that, that most likely won't be the only thing that fixes this problem. But when you approach this issue with the mindset of improving your overall health and moving in the right direction by consuming more whole foods, this is going to put you in the game for actually being able to control and manage these issues as a whole, instead of just trying to isolate a single nutrient or a mineral and trying to get enough of that just to try to help you solve a problem. So again, it's all about the big picture. It's all about your overall health. When you improve your overall health, your blood pressure has no choice but to get better as well. So again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them inside of, um, um, the, inside of the chat. And I'll get to those questions as soon as I keep moving through this, this series. Um, next up, where we at? Next up. Next up, we're going to talk about sodium. The uh, reason we're going to go into sodium because this is a very, very big part of it when it comes down to understanding how this operates. And the reason why, the reason why is because once you understand the details about sodium, you start, you actually be more mindful of how you're consuming it and also know where the excess is coming from. Because many people dealing with uh, high blood pressure issues, a lot of them have sodium sensitivities. And not all, but a lot of people. Because sodium is not necessarily, uh, for some people, it might, might not necessarily be their problem. But the better you understand it, the better you're able to check this box and make sure that you did all you can to better understand this issue or this pathway, the more likely you're gonna be able to proceed with the better understanding and more confidence in getting to the root cause of the problem. So we're gonna talk about sodium and break down some of the things um, that it contributes to and how uh, we need to manage it. And then we're gonna get into those questions and talk a little bit more about a few things that we have going on, specifically the elimination factor, because I wanna definitely touch on the elimination aspect because um, this is gonna be a big part, especially for uh, everyone as a whole when it comes down to getting control and maintaining control, because that's what it is. Because we're seeing a lot of results right now with people having three great days, four great days, uh, doing really well, but those are all great things. But we need to make sure that we're maintaining control because at any given time, you know, you could you lose control of the steering wheel. But you need to make sure you know how to get back control of it and make sure that you're heading in the right direction, which is a health promoting direction. So we're going to talk about the elimination factors uh, as I get through this and then we'll keep moving forward. So next up is going to be sodium. Sodium, a mineral commonly consumed in the form of salt, which is sodium chloride, plays a significant role in development and management of high blood pressure. When we consume excessive amounts of sodium, it can lead to fluid retention and increased blood volume, which in turn raises your blood pressure. The kidneys play a crucial role in maintaining the balance of sodium in the body, but excessive sodium intake can overwhelm their abilities to excrete it efficiently. This can result in higher sodium levels in the bloodstream, causing water retention and an increase in blood pressure. 
Individuals with hypertension or predisposition to high blood pressure are often advised to reduce their sodiums. We hear this all the time. We go to the doctor and we get diagnosed with blood, high blood pressure. The first thing most doctors say is you need to reduce your sodium intake and, you know, maybe get some exercise. That's usually the first route that they go to. And they even may go as far as saying, okay, I'm going to give you a water pill or a diuretic, hydrochlorothiazide, and these other type of loops and different type of um, meds that they hand out just so you can excrete the excess amount of sodium and, you know, bring the blood pressure down. But as we've been talking about through this, um, through this, um, through these classes, you know, that doesn't solve the problem. That's a big old band-aid that they put on you. And, just excreting the sodium through the urine doesn't necessarily, it's not going to help you get any better. In fact, it's only going to cause further issues because other electrolytes get lost through the same process like potassium and, and magnesium. And those are both uh, essential when it comes down to your overall heart health and your blood pressure. So understanding that, um, you know, getting to the root cause and understanding the impact that sodium has is going to be very, very important. So the next thing we're going to go into is um, understanding where the sodium comes from. So limiting the consumption of processed and packaged foods, which, which tends to be high in sodium, is a practical approach. Inst instead, opt for fresh whole foods and using herbs and spices to en enhance flavors can help manage sodium intake and support healthy blood pressure levels. It's essential to strike a balance between sodium intake and overall cardiovascular health to promote optimum well-being. So when it comes down to sodium, the majority of excess sodium that people are consuming comes from processed foods. The salt shaker is not necessarily your enemy when it comes down to uh, high blood pressure. The salt shaker is not always the enemy. Now, don't get this confused with it's okay to use the salt shaker. I'm just saying it's not the primary enemy for most people. Even though it is on the bad side, it's not the first place you should start when it comes down to reducing your sodium levels. Processed foods is step one. You have to eliminate the processed and refined foods that are in your diet. The canned foods, the cereals, the, the packaged foods, the frozen foods, the fast foods. Those have to go if you plan on getting control of your blood pressure. You ain't going to eat Chick-fil-A and still have, have control of your blood pressure. I'm sorry to say it's not going to happen. Uh, you're not going to be eating ketchup and mustard and barbecue sauce and all those things and expect to control your blood pressure. It's not going to happen because all of those foods are very, very high in sodium and they will send you on a roller coaster ride and you will not have an idea of what's going on. It's as simple as that. So if you're, if you're struggling with your blood pressure issues, it's very, very important that you understand processed foods, eliminate them from your diet and get control of this problem. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say you can't have any of your favorite snacks anymore, but at this point in time, with you dealing with the blood pressure issues, you don't deserve a snack. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to give it to you any type of way. You don't deserve a snack until you get control of the problem at hand because you having a snack a little bit here and a little bit there, that's still fueling your problem. And you're not showing any signs of getting better every time you dibble, dab, and have a little bit of cake and a little bit of this and a Ritz cracker here and a saltine there thinking that it's okay to do a little bit here and a little bit there. That's not going to help you. And if you want to help yourself, you have to understand that these processed and packaged, packaged foods, I need to eliminate them right now. These are not doing me no good. That Ritz cracker that I'm enjoying it's going to send me to my grave faster than I want to be there. So let me push these to the side and let me focus on what's happening right now, which is getting control of my blood pressure by eliminating these processed foods and eating more whole foods that are going to actually stimulate me and help me in the right direction. So understanding that packaged foods are the number one, um, the, the number one place where the excess of sodium is coming from and eliminating these foods as much as possible is going to be the, um, the right way to go about it. Now, it's going to take you to understand where this sodium is hiding at because a lot of times it's hidden, up, it's hidden under other names inside of these packaged foods. So the best thing to do is focus on eating more whole foods. And if you are getting something in a package, such as like maybe some canned tomatoes or maybe even canned vegetables, you have to make sure you identify the, the ones that say, 
no added sodium. It's just probably simply sitting inside of water or whatever other ingredients that are there that have to be natural whole foods as well. Because typically the foods that are low in sodium and not highly processed, they might have four or five ingredients in them and you can recognize what those four or five ingredients are. It may say tomatoes, carrots, um, whatever, but it'll be a food that you can understand. But when it starts going into the tomatoes, carrots, um, sodium hydroxide, citric acid, and all those other things that you can identify, you need to understand that you got to move away from those. Look for another alternative because there are many companies out here that make foods that that have no added sodium in them that are just as good as these other products. Because we have to remember, the only reason companies put sodium inside of these foods is one, to make it shelf stable so it can stay on the shelf as long as possible without uh, going bad. Because sodium is basically... Um, Sodium is a preservative. It keeps things fresh on the, on the shelf. That way bacteria doesn't even want to bother it because of the amount of sodium that's in it. And when the bacteria and the germs are like, oh, I don't want that, then clearly it's not something that you, you want to consume either because of what it can do and the damage that it can cause to the body. So finding the brands that have no sodium in them is going to be the best choice if you're picking, picking up any packaged foods. And on top of that, making sure that your center focus is going to be all on whole foods. That's going to be what drives you to the, in the right direction when it comes down to um, rebuilding the body to get control of the blood pressure issues. So here's a list of packaged foods that are often high in sodium and should be avoided when trying to control your blood pressure. Processed meats, deli meats, bacon, sausages, hot dogs, canned meats. All of these are typically high in sodium due to the curing and a preserving process. So if you're having a breakfast with deli meats or bacon and sausages and hot dogs and you find yourself consuming them throughout the day and doing different times and things like that, those are your triggers right there. Understanding that I got to shake away from these things now that's going to help you move forward a whole lot faster because the amount of sodium in the amount of sodium in those products are through the roof and they're going to continue to cause an imbalance in your body when it comes down to the minerals that are needed to regulate your blood pressure and you're going to continue to see issues and, pro and they're going to progressively get worse. You may think that a little hot dog you had at 4th of July was okay and it ain't do nothing right then, but it's building because one, you're not effectively eliminating the excess sodium from your body. And now when you had that hot dog for 4th of July and you decided to have some crackers last night for a snack, it's building up inside of your body. Then eventually your, your body's going to be triggered and you're going to have a reaction. And hopefully that reaction is not a heart attack or a stroke and something that can cripple you and debilitate you and cause you to have further complications. So it's very, un, very important that we understand that these things that we're consuming are building inside of our body. And we have to understand one, how to eliminate them from our diet and rebuild our body to not have not um, be overwhelmed by these types of problems. So processed meats, deli meats, bacon, sausages, hot dogs, canned meats, um, all these are typically high in sodium. The next one, canned soups and broths. Mini canned soups, broths, uh, the bouillon cubes, all these have an, uh, a high amount of sodium inside of them. And it's important that we understand, like, you know, we might try to do the right thing by having, a, you know, a soup or something like that. They're high in sodium, especially the ones that are canned and packaged up. So we have to understand that where this sodium comes from. Just because you didn't know it had an excessive amount of sodium doesn't mean you're, you're spared from the consequences of you consuming them. It's your job as an individual that's over your own health to understand where these processed foods and this high amount of sodium is coming from. The better you're able to understand where it's coming from, the better you're able to avoid them completely and prevent any problems from occurring afterwards. So it's your responsibility to understand this. If you're looking to get to the root cause of the problem, you got to thump those things away and shake away from those habits. And it's all about finding the things to plug in their place to help you move along the scale or along the spectrum to a more health promoting um, diet. The next one, which I think is the most important one, is the condiments and sauces. Bottled salad dressings, ketchup, soy sauce, barbecue sauce, and other condiments often have high sodium contents. 
So understanding that ketchup is not your friend. Uh, honey mustard is not your friend. Mayo is not your friend. Um, salad dressings in general, all salad dressings are on the shelf, 99.9% .9 of them are not your friend because of the excessive amount of sodium, oils, and sugars that are inside of them. You may be thinking that you're doing something good by having a salad and squeezing some Italian dressing on top of it and moving in the health promoting direction because you got these fruits and vegetables on top of the salad. If you're lacing it with the, the, the vinaigrettes and the Caesar dressings and all those other things, you just did yourself a whole disservice when it comes down to the nutrient value of your food because on top of those antioxidants that you're putting in your system, you're dumping more more fuel for the free radicals and you basically you're just you're just loading yourself back up and you're not going to get the results that you're looking for so understanding that these um sauces and and dressings and all those um toppings that we you, that we use and dip in we have to understand that those all are high in sodium now does this mean that you can't have any sauce for certain foods that you're consuming no, not at all. Just simply, you have to understand how to make your own. And in the seven-day um, fruit and salad um, challenge, you guys have the recipes that was there for the salad dressings. And that same thing goes for having other condiments to top your your um, other things that you that you're having. I'm not sure what it, what you might be eating, but yeah, to top other things that you're having. But making sure that you know where your sodium is coming from and you're able to control it is going to be a big part of it. So not allowing yourself to be vulnerable and making sure you're following the right measures is how you get to the finish line when it comes to getting to the root cause of this problem. The next one is going to be snack foods, chips, pretzels, crackers, and all these other you know, salty snack foods are notoriously high in sodium. Simple as this. If it's a package of food, it might not even taste salty. If you look at Oreos, Oreos are one of these sweetest cookie snacks that are out there. It's loaded in sodium. Reason being, companies take salt, oil, and sugar, and they create what's called a bliss point. And this bliss point is what gives it a flavor profile so that each and every time you eat this Oreo, each and every time you eat this Dorito, each and every other time that you eat this rich cracker, it tastes exactly the same. That's because these scientists and these chemists that they got into these labs and they created a bliss point with salt, oils, and sugar to make this specific item taste the same everywhere you go. I can eat a bag of Doritos in Miami and I can fly across to, to San Diego and eat a bag of Doritos there. It's going to taste exactly the same because of how they chemically structured it. It's all designed for taste and stimulation. Your health is nowhere involved in this equation when it comes down to the food that, that they're making. So understanding that they, they do you no good, they overstimulate you, and they're ultimately going to be your demise if you're constantly consuming them especially if you're dealing with high blood pressure. And I, I'm emphasizing on that, especially because you should know that these processed foods are not it. And if you don't know that, I'm telling you right now, that way you have your come to Jesus moment, you have your warning sign, because I'm a firm believer that everyone gets their wake up call to do better about their health. Now it's up to you if you're gonna answer that phone and wake up, that's totally your decision. But if you're here in this group right now, this is your wake-up call saying, hey, put that down, do better. This is me calling you and checking you like, yo, do better. Come on, it's the time right now. You got the support that you need. You're here, follow through. This is what your wake-up call looks like. It's up to you to answer that phone and step up to the equation for your own health and start doing the things that you need to do. Uh, next up, it's going to be instant noodles and ready-to-eat meals. Instant noodles, prepackaged pasta, rice. Uh, rice dishes, sorry, and uh, ready-to-eat meals are often loaded with sodium to enhance the flavor profile and prolong the shelf the shelf life. This goes for um, frozen foods, more so in particular. A lot of the frozen items that are on the shelf in the freezer section, these are all there and they're loaded with sodium just to help preserve it on this shelf. That way, you know, it, it tastes a certain way by the time you're actually ready to pop it in the microwave or however in the oven and heat it up. So we have to understand that these foods are not structured with your health in mind. They're structured in a way to keep them shelf stable, 
make these companies some profit and make sure that it tastes the same exact way each and every time that you get it. So these foods are all things that we should be staying away from and uh, moving forward, uh, moving forward, we should be just dealing, uh, doing away with them as we try to get control of our blood pressure. Another one is going to be processed cheese and cheese spreads. Processed cheese and cheese spreads. Processed cheese products, cheese spreads, cheese dips, all of these are loaded in sodium. Those little cheese shreds that you put on top of pretty much anything, the little packaged cheese, you know, they got the mozzarella, the cheddar, uh, all those processed cheese, even the ones in like the feta and all those things, those are all high in sodium because you can't make it without added, adding sodium. So understanding that cheese is not your friend, and I'm talking about on a high, on a high level, this is not going to do anything for you. It's not going to be beneficial in any type of way. It's not giving you anything. It's highly processed. It takes your body a world of trouble and energy just to try and break it down and, and digest it. So understanding that through the waste of energy that's coming out of your body trying to eliminate these, these cheese items, it's also contributing to your blood pressure issues. So understanding that these processed foods have to be removed from your diet if you expect to get control of your blood pressure. Uh, <clears throat> next up, just remembering to read the nutrition labels and being mindful of your sodium content is essential when it comes down to packaged foods. And I think I went and said enough about all that already. But uh, <clears throat> pretty much those are the things that uh, you have to focus on when it comes down to the sodium aspect inside of your diet. Because again, you can be doing everything right, but if you're still allowing for the negative foods to come into your body and have that negative impact, you're going to see your meter go just like this. One day it might look good, the other day it's going to be back and forth, and you're going to be on a roller coaster ride, and you're not going to understand it, and you're going to feel like you're, doing, you're not doing right. You're going to feel like a failure. You're going to feel like, you know, it's hopeless, and then you're going to... You're going to have these issues and these troubles. You're going to go to the doctor. They're probably going to prescribe more medication. And then you're going to be even more down because you're just going to feel like you're helpless. But you have to understand that. Um, oh, look, I think I see something saying um, we're jamming up. And all right, I'm, I'm going to slow down. If you guys can, uh, if you guys can hear me, just make sure. Let me make sure that you uh, can hear me clearly. Uh, before I keep going, uh, <laughs> I hate that um, it's starting to break down and I want us to have a good night. But uh, if you can hear me and see me clearly, go ahead and drop a one inside of the chat. That way I can make sure that um, we're all moving in the right direction. <laughs> because, uh, okay, I'm seeing some good. Hear me clearly. Okay, thank you, Miss Dana. Uh, thank you, Miss Nettles. Um, let's see, let's see. I, okay, I'm going to try to keep going. And um, because I'm getting quite a few people saying they can hear me clearly. So I'm going to try to keep rolling through. That way um, we don't lose out too much. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of ones start to come through right now. So I'm guessing that it might have just chopped up a little bit in certain areas. But it looks like we're doing good. So um, where was I? Um, oh, removing. So uh, eliminating the, um, the excess sodium or the uh, eliminating the items from your diet that are causing damage to the body is going to be important because you can't try to eat the health promoting foods and still eat the foods that are damaging to the body and expect for yourself to actually have the results that you need to get to, uh, um, get to the, the blood pressure goals that you wish to obtain. So next up, I'm going to talk about uh, elimination. And um, this is a, a, a more broader conversation and I'm going to lead into elimination because that's where I, our next challenge leads us to. Because we have to understand, uh, we have to understand elimination mainly because for some of us, the elimination efforts need to be increased before we actually see the results that we're looking for. A lot of people that are showing up and uh, having these great blood pressure readings, which is awesome. They're doing things in the right way and their body is still actively eliminating and balancing itself out like it needs to. So we have to understand that, okay, for those of us that are facing more challenges, we need to focus more on the elimination aspect 
um, by you know eliminating the foods that we shouldn't be consuming, which is uh, quite a few more than what I just read off here. What I read off here was just specifically sodium related, but we have to understand the other foods that we need to eliminate and the other things that we need to incorporate in our diet and our lifestyle to help us continue to build our bodies up. And this also goes for the people that are getting these great results. Getting these great results, that's what the goal is. But maintaining these results is the main thing because as your life continues to move forward, things are going to happen. Birthday parties, events, uh, lifestyle changes, stress, um, all these things are, are due to occur at some point throughout your lifestyle. So it's very, very throughout your life. So it's very, very important that you understand how to improve your overall lifestyle to make sure that these issues, these blood pressure issues are not coming back. So it's expected for you to continue to continue moving in the right direction with the same type of lifestyle, eating more fruits and adding more salads to your diet, but also focusing on all these other areas and making sure that you're um, eliminating the foods that can be contributing to your blood pressure issue as well is going to be part of the process. Now for the next challenge that I'm going to introduce you guys to briefly here is it's going to be focused on the elimination efforts of the body. The, more, the better you're able to understand how the body eliminates and works let me, let me slow down. The better you're able to understand how the body works when it comes down to elimination related to your overall health and your blood pressure, the better you're going to be able to identify those triggering foods, those triggering things, and be able to move away from them to continue to dot your I's and cross your T's when it comes down to checking off you know, those issues that can be... Um, potentially related to your blood pressure. So in the next challenge that's coming up in another week, we're gonna be focusing on the body's elimination efforts and we're gonna dive deep into them. That way you can, be, you can gain more understanding through this process. Because again, the last thing you wanna do is work so hard, get these great results, and then all of a sudden things start to change. And you know, it's not looking the same. And your blood pressure go from 112 over 70 all the way back to 135 over 90. And you're like, okay, what, I'm, what am I doing wrong? So it's important that you understand, you know, the potential causes and the risk factors that are there. And our next challenge, we're gonna be solely focusing on that aspect. That way you can continue to be locked in on these challenges and be able to take step by step by step to get through these lifestyle changes, be better able to understand your daily, your day-to-day -day habits and continue to improve on them. Because one thing that we must understand is that this is a journey and us as individuals, and I say us because I'm part of this too. I dealt with the high blood pressure issue as well. Us as individuals, we're susceptible to this condition. It's as simple as that. We have it and you know we need to understand our lifestyle as a whole to make sure that it doesn't cause any further issues or complications down the road. And understanding every, every understanding the different pathways is gonna be very, very important for this aspect. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and take some questions. I saw quite a few in, so I'm gonna dial back just a little bit. I'm gonna answer some questions. If you have any more, feel free to drop them in the chat. And I'm going to run through these questions, answer some of them. And if anybody have any testimony, they want to come on live and talk about some of their concerns, feel free to hit that little join the live button. And I'll definitely have you guys on. That way we could just talk about, you know, some of the issues or challenges that you might be feeling with. Uh, Miss Andrea Nichols asks, how's my mom? I hope she's fine. Yeah, she's doing very, very well. Um, she's actually... Um, She's, yeah, she's doing, doing really, really well. She broke her fast at 14 days. Um, and basically, she's transitioning to a fruit, uh, not a fruit, a juice cleanse. And we're going to keep her moving in the right direction with more health-promoting lifestyle, with a more health-promoting lifestyle. And I'm definitely going to do an update on her uh, in a few. Uh, uh, what's a normal reading for a person with, um, with, with normal blood pressure? That's what I'm going to take that as. Um, so... <clears throat> That's a great question because one thing that you're going to see is you're going to see that the normal reading for society right now is 120 over 80. That's a normal reading for the average person. That's what doctors recommend. But I want you guys to understand that 
<clears throat> excuse me. I want you guys to understand that the societal norms is not a healthy norm. That's 120 over 80 is what doctors say that's okay before they have to start any type of intervention. So understanding 120 over 80, that's a societal norm, a standard American normal. And when you look at the standard American, the standard American diet, what they're consuming, most Americans are obese, most of them eat trash food, most of them are simply not healthy, and they're asking for 120 over 80. In my opinion, your blood pressure should be a whole lot lower than that when it comes down to be a, being a fully healthy individual. So 120 over 80 is like the cap off mark. If you're 120 over 80, you should start looking at what you're doing and continue to make more health promoting choices. Now I'm not saying 120 over 80 is bad. I'm just saying that 120 over 80 is the American normal and nothing in America is normal, especially when it comes down to health. So striving to be lower than 120 over 80 is ideal. Now this doesn't mean that you have to be 120 over 80 or below to be healthy, but this means that those numbers are more closer in alignment with um, more health promoting practices. But there are also a lot of, uh, there are also other factors that determine your blood pressure range. Your ethnicity is definitely one of the biggest ones. Um, so understanding that its range is different from most people, but not looking at 120 over 80 as the societal norms and looking at that as your target, you know, it's, you should always strive to get better. I've seen throughout the group, I've seen a lot of 111s over 70s and things like that. Those are all the, the areas that you should be striving for. Those are all great blood pressure readings. And anything lower than 120 over 80 is going to be very much ideal for where you, where you should be. So um, hopefully, Miss Yvonne, I, I answered that question for you. And I'm going to keep moving forward. What beverages can I drink besides water daily? Do I eat fruits and vegetables daily, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Uh, never. I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. But um, I guess you're talking about the challenge. But inside the challenge, inside of the ebook, I listed all the different foods and things that you could cook, the different fruits and vegetables that are high in those different minerals. Hopefully that can assist you if you join inside of the, um, inside of the, the challenge. Uh, what else we got? Keep moving. I'm sorry about freezing up too, man. I definitely apologize. Somebody called me like 10 times in the mix of it. I knew it wasn't important, but uh, they still kept calling me. Um, <laughs> I'll keep moving forward. And I don't see any more questions. I know it's someone I saw. Uh, here we go. Here we go. A question with blood pressure issues. Do grapefruit inhibits the medication? Yeah, definitely. Uh, grapefruit can, can affect certain blood pressure medications. I'm not exactly sure um, which ones again, but it, it can have um, an interaction with the different medications. Uh, one of the best things to do would be to talk to your doctor about it directly. And that way, you know, they can make the adjustments for you. Because a lot of times when this happens, it's just simply you're just having a, a higher dosage. Um, and it, that's what's causing the issue. By your doctor just dumbing down the dosage amount that you're having, that their reaction won't even happen anymore. So when you talk to your doctor about certain things, uh, certain changes that you're making, their job is to meet you where you're at and bring the dosage down. Your doctor's gonna say, no, don't don't eat grapefruits or don't eat fruits and vegetables. That's not, that's a good doctor. I'm not gonna say that's not what they're supposed to do. A good doctor won't tell you that. Your, your good doctor's gonna say, okay, if you're making more health promoting choices, let me make sure that my treatment aligns with your goals and your lifestyle that way I can meet you where you need to be because ultimately you don't even want to deal with the medication. So ultimately him bringing it down here, you leveling up your lifestyle and getting better, will eventually decrease the need for the pharmaceutical medications and throw that completely out of the window. So if you, you know, if you're worried about, you know, the foods that you're consuming interfering with your medications, the, the goal, the objective is to get rid of the medication, not get rid of the food. Don't say, Oh, I'm not having no grapefruit or, know these type of foods because they mess with my medicine talk to your doctor about your medicine because the foods are natural they're going to be the pathway to getting off this problem talk to your doctor about your medicine and your goal and the strategy that you're taking and let them guide you away from the pharmaceutical medications because that's what doctors ultimately want you to do to get better that's what they supposed to that's what they should be looking for to do and if your doctor's uh, ideology don't align with you getting off of pharmaceutical pharmaceutical medications, then clearly you probably might want to find another doctor because 
their goal is and your goal is just not meeting and doing the same type of thing. So remember, you live inside of your body, and ultimately, it's your decision to um or how you want to do things. Uh, what else we got here? <clears throat> Let's see. I had an episode this morning of light headaches. Is that associated with my diet? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's one of the detox symptoms. So if you're someone that's, um, you know, let's say you got a highly toxic body and you start introducing these electric fruits and these nutrients and these foods that are going to crank up your, your organs of elimination, you're going to start moving toxins around. And when these toxins start moving around, they're going to stimulate you in certain ways and they could cause a headache. They, they could cause you to break out. They could um, cause you to use the bathroom more. It could be a number of things that happen. But headaches are typically something that comes with the, the process of elimination. So understanding that you don't want to suppress this headache by taking, you know, over-the-counter drugs, Tylenol, Advil, and things like that. You want to allow for this to run its course because adding more drugs to the, to the body basically just suppresses the headache it gives your body more chemicals that it needs to ultimately eliminate as well and now your elimination efforts have moved away from you know cleansing the body of the toxins that was contributing to your blood pressure issues and your other health issues and it's been re redirected to just eliminating the toxic medication that's inside of the body and now you're going to find yourself just spinning around in a circle so understand that those headaches from you know you know the dietary changes they come and go come and go they're, they're not something that's going to be just pounding out for, well, for most people because I have seen it where it just it goes crazy. But for most people, they come and go, come and go. But understanding the, the cycle that you're going through is going to be very, very important because once you start interfering with your body's natural cleansing method, now you just you just slow yourself down. And now, ultimately, you're going to reset yourself. And then you, if you try to do another method of cleansing, you're going to have to go through that whole process all over again. So allowing those headaches to run their course is always going to be the best option. The only thing that you shouldn't feel is sick. You shouldn't feel sick like, like I need to check into the hospital because I don't know what's going on. If you're getting stomach cramps and gas and stuff like that, that's all pretty normal. Headaches, that's all pretty normal. But if you feel like you're sick and you know you just don't know what's going on, that's a sign of something deeper that's going on and something, and that's a cause for concern where you should get some medical attention. But headaches, nausea, even some vomiting or diarrhea or stomach cramps or you know things like that. That's movement that's happening inside of the body. Your body is building up its energies to eliminate a lot better. So understanding that those will come and go, but it's not something that um, should worry you too much. Just understand it and work your way through the, through the process. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, what else we got? How does CMOS help with blood pressure? Miss um, Mayhorn, um, I think I had this CMOS conversation um, further way down the line, but uh, short short answer, it doesn't help with blood pressure. It's a, it's a Band-Aid, and that's pretty much all it is. Um, if you want to check out a little bit more on that topic, I did a video last Tuesday about it, and you could get a more of a breakdown there of how I actually went over it. Uh, <clears throat> what else do we have? Let's see. If you got any questions, feel free to uh, drop it in, and I keep going. What is your opinion on taking vitamins through an IV and a B12 injection? Um, 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 I think that's Mildred. Um, what is my opinion against my opinion on taking vitamins through an IV and B12 injection? Um, it's not natural. It's as simple as that. Um, because again, you never know what vitamins or minerals, your, how much vitamins or minerals your body needs at a specific moment. So when you take an IV, you're just injecting a bunch of nutrients into your body. And yeah, your body could possibly grab onto some stuff that it needs. But what ultimately happens is that these nutrients are going to stimulate your body in a positive way. You might find yourself with more energy. You might find yourself being more lively and able to get your tasks that you need to do accomplished at that time. But now your body has to increase its elimination efforts to get rid of the excess that it doesn't need. And ultimately, that's going to leave you more tired and more fatigued the next go around and leave you reaching for another IV, reaching for more nutrients because you're like, dang. Man, I need another IV because, you know, I want that feeling that I had last time from the last time I had it. But you're in a cycle now 
where you're stimulating your body and exhausting your body. Stimulating your body and exhausting your body because of the excess that's coming in and now your body has to get rid of it. Whereas if you just focus on eating more whole foods and getting the vitamins and minerals and nutrients from their natural sources, your body can properly assimilate and utilize them the way that it needs to instead of having these inorganic compounds come into it and force it to do additional work that it probably doesn't have the energy to do anyways and that just caused bigger complications. So understanding that, you know, that is not an, a route that you want to go because it's not sustainable. And you, anything that you do, you want to make sure that it's sustainable, it has a lasting effect, and it's beneficial for your overall health. There's nothing beneficial for an IV if you're not dying at the moment and they need to, to do certain things just to make sure they're keeping you alive. If you're just taking an IV because you're exhausted at work and... You know, you know, this is just a, a, a quick method that, that can help you at the moment. You probably need to look deeper into the reasons why you're exhausted and why you need an IV instead of just taking that shortcut to help yourself at the moment. So it's really a personal decision. You want to get better right now with a quick fix or you want to fix your problem now and don't even have to deal with it later on. So, you know, you got to really find a soft spot on what makes you happy and go through that. Um, <clears throat> Here we go. What else we got? So any questions, feel free to drop them there. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What is your take on vegan meat substitutes? Uh, Miss Holly, um, any vegan meat substitute, run away from them as fast as you can. Anything vegan meat substitute related, stay away from them as much as possible. Reason being the salt, the oils, the sugars, and all the other additive that's inside of it. We have to understand this part. And this is one reason why um, I have a few issues with the vegan movement. Because, you know, the term vegan, it doesn't necessarily mean healthy. It doesn't promote health. It's not, nothing, nothing's healthy about being vegan. Oreos are vegan. Cupcakes can be vegan. Ritz crackers are vegan. Um, your favorite Doritos are vegan. Salt and vinegar chips are vegan. All these things are, are vegan. They don't necessarily scream health. And if you're someone that's looking to correct a blood pressure issue or any type of health issue, not, not, you, the answer is not necessarily going vegan or you know, adopting a vegan lifestyle because we have to understand the, the fence that these terms straddle along because your goal, your, your, your structure should look more like eating more whole foods, having a whole food plant-based lifestyle because a lot of these vegan alternatives, to get back to your question, they're, they're filled with a lot of additives to make certain things taste like things that we used to, that, that, we, that we still want to enjoy. So we should understand that we don't want to find a substitute for a certain things. Like instead of having a packaged sausage, we're reaching for a vegan sausage in, instead. It's damn near the same thing, just to, just to put it in simple terms. This one's got an animal, pro, animal products inside of it. It does this thing. This one is filled up with the fake artificial salt oils and sugars and all those things inside of it as well it's no it's damn near no better than the other items so understanding that you don't want to substitute i don't instead of having a regular sausage i'm gonna have a vegan sausage it doesn't do anything for you and that goes for all vegan substitute items you know it may be less bad for the system but it's still not good just because it's less bad doesn't mean that it's healthy it's, it's better so we have to understand that you know those terms that we hear a lot of time, vegan and things like that, they, they necessarily don't, they don't necessarily have your best interest in mind. So understanding how to read labels, identify processed foods, because that's exactly what it is. It's a highly processed food. When you understand what those are, now you're better able to maneuver through them and get away from them. So anyone dealing with the chronic issue, you should definitely stay away from those vegan alternatives, those vegan processed foods and just simply do better when it comes down to those different type of options. Excuse me. Um, any questions, feel free to drop them inside of, inside of the chat, and uh, that way I can keep answering them up for you, and I'll just keep going through the, through, the, um, uh, through the thing. I was just about to say that you are our wake-up call. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Ms. Rita, thank you. You know, everybody, everybody gets a wake-up call. I'm a firm believer that we all get wake-up calls to just do better with our lives. Excuse me. Oh, man, the coconut water is so good. Uh, here we go. I suffer from high blood pressure more than 11 years, and I have never I have never sourced seen my blood pressure so... Oh, I, I've suffered from high blood pressure for more than 11 years, and I've never seen my blood pressure so stable. And uh, Miss Yolanda, I believe I've been following you um, through the group. Um, 
It's all about the lifestyle changes, man. Just making the dietary adjustments. So the main thing is just continue to build on that because again, your life is going to change. Things are going to change, but you want to make sure that you have a solid foundation. That way you can um, continue to uh, just live a health promoting lifestyle and eventually work your way off of medications. If you are on medication and then, you know, just um, continue to just live a, a more health promoting path. So I'm, I'm scrolling through and I guess I'm, I'm going through some of the stuff that was all jammed up a little bit, but as I keep moving forward, I can see a few things. Uh, uh, Mr. Zig, uh, Guan Zig, where can you find salad dressing recipes? Uh, they're inside of the seven day fruit and salad ebook. Um, yeah, so if you signed up for the challenge, the seven day fruit and salad ebook, it has all the dressing recipes to help you understand more about the, the moving forward without the salt, oils, and sugars inside of your recipe. Um, inside of your, inside of your, um, it has, I'm sorry, it has the, the recipes inside an ebook to help you move forward away from the, the salt, oils, and sugars that are inside of most salad dressing recipes. Uh, what is this? Uh, let's see. My agency is having a cookout tomorrow. I'm just saying no. I had a TIA in May of this year. Don't want, want that experience again. Yeah, just saying no is one of the biggest things, man. You know, knowing that you, uh, you just want to move forward from having any type of issues it's going to be very, very important. I must have misunderstood the challenge because all I have been eating fruits, nuts, and vegetables was I supposed to be eating regular food as, as well. Um, well, it wasn't anything against eating regular food as well. Uh, you can still have the foods that you consume, but you know, eating more fruits and vegetables, adding them to your diet was the, the main goal of the challenge. Adding more fresh, adding three to five servings of fresh fruits and having one large salad every day that's what's the ultimate challenge. Just challenge yourself to start eating more whole foods. It wasn't just, you know, going on a raw diet. But if you did go just completely raw with fruits and vegetables, that's totally fine. Most likely, you're probably going to see bigger, better results than the average person. But, you know, those are all part of the, um, the process. Ms. Baxter says, your salad dressing recipes are delicious. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Baxter. Uh, you know, I have a, a seven-day plant-based um, introduction cookbook where I have tons of other recipes as well, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all those different things, along with more salad dressing recipes and a few other things. So if you're interested in that, you can just click the link in my bio and that'll take you to that part as well. Uh, let's see. Any other questions, feel free to drop them in. What age factor in what age factors when it comes down to a normal blood pressure? So, Ms. Caldwell, um, typically what happens is as you continue to get older, um, your cardiovascular system starts to break down. Your, your whole body starts to break down to some degree uh, based off of your lifestyle, of course. So, you know, most people that are older tend to have a higher blood pressure, but... It's important to understand that your lifestyle ultimately determines a lot of these things. Um, Miss Marianne, I talked about you um, last last time we was here, actually. Miss Marianne just turned 70 years old. If I'm not mistaken, the last time she posted her blood pressure was 113 over 68 over 50 or something in that ballpark. I'm not, I might not be exactly right. She's 70 years old, and that's her blood pressure. That's where she's been consistently probably the last three months and I watched her blood pressure regulate itself for like probably like the last year or so because she's been a part of all the different journeys and the, the um, journeys and challenges that we had and things like that. So she's 70 years old. So that's a testament that, you know, when you improve your lifestyle, your overall health will get better. And as a byproduct of what you're doing, your blood pressure is going to adjust itself as well. So the medical American norm is for people to get older and have higher blood pressure. But... This is all based off of unhealthy individuals, people that are not living a health promoting lifestyle and doing the things that they need to do when it comes to eating better, sleeping right, managing their stress and all those important factors. So if you improve your overall lifestyle, you can expect your blood pressure to start to come down and regulate no matter how old you are. Because we right now, we see 15 year old kids with hypertension and we see these adults like Miss Marianne with their blood pressure is down and regulated and manageable. So. It's just a matter of your lifestyle and the way that you're living your life. So um, it's really something that you, that's, that's important that you, that you understand. Your lifestyle is everything. Here we go. Does rosemary and oregano help with lowering blood pressure? Those are all stimulants. You don't want to become reliant upon taking any herbs to help you with those things. 
So, you know, it's important that, um, that you uh, work on improving your, your, your lifestyle as a whole instead of just taking um, any medications. Mickey, Nikki Barstow, hello, I just stopped my blood pressure medication. Do you know how long it takes to stop the side effects of hair loss from the medicine? Uh, Miss Nikki, the first thing I'm going to say is never stop taking your medication without your doctor's approval. Uh, reason being, your doctor might have saw something to actually prompt them to putting you on medication. So you never want to stop your medication without talking to your doctor about what you're doing, especially if you're not in a position where you're able to focus on your lifestyle and improve the way that you need to. So that's rule number one. Never stop taking your medication until you talk with your doctor about what's going on. Because getting off of medication, it, for many individuals, it's a process of being weaned off your medication through the tactics and strategies and allowing for your doctor to see you get better and pull them. Because the last thing you want to do is say, okay, my blood pressures look good. I'm going to stop taking my medication. But in actuality, your body's not even strong enough to actually support the blood pressure that you're seeing and you know maintain that type of number or reading that you're getting so understanding that just stopping your medication it can be very very dangerous it's dangerous it can lead to further complications and that's what you don't want to happen because even though blood pressure medication causes a ton of issues they do have their place because for many people the blood pressure medication is probably the only thing that's keeping you alive because the lifestyle is so in the trash and so messed up because of the food we're eating, the things we're doing, the way we're living as a whole. So it's important to understand that you don't want to just stop your medication no matter what type of side effects that you're experiencing. Consult with your doctor to, about what you're dealing with and then be ready to make some changes to correct the issues that you're doing, you're dealing with, and you got to set a structure, set a goal to actually get to it. Because again, a lot of people have been dealing with um, blood pressure issues for many, many years because they've been living a poor lifestyle for all these years. You don't just fix this in a week's time or you know a, a couple days or what have you. It takes a strategy and consistent building the body up in order to get where you need to be. So understanding that you don't want to just top stop your medication and I highly recommend that you just check in with your doctor about any complications that you're having that way um you could get better insights on what's going on because again I don't know your medical history or, or seeing your blood work to be able to tell you what's happening but your doctors prescribe you the specific meds for whatever reason so it's important to check in with them because they're the ones that's reviewing your charts and stuff like that um <clears throat> here we go Let's see, the three mornings I'm working. Let's see, Miss Clara. The three mornings I'm working nights this week. I got up every hour for three for four hours straight to pee. Do you think it has something to do with this challenge? Uh yeah, definitely. Um <clears throat> what happens is when you start consuming more fresh fruits and vegetables and things like that, these items are all high in water. Because remember, you're getting more fiber, more water, more vitamins, more minerals, more enzymes, and your process your your, your elimination efforts are going to be increased. So you may see more elimination. You may see yourself getting up more to go to the bathroom than normal. So this is a normal part of the process. It's actually a good thing that's happening. But just be more mindful about, you know, eating certain things closer to bedtime and things like that. But um, it's a normal part of the process. Usually your body does adjust to this whole cycle because um, for me personally, I can eat all the way up to eight o'clock, eat you know, watermelon and foods that are high in, in water and things like that. But I still won't wake up in the middle of the night. I, 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 my body ends up holding it all the way to in the morning and go from there. So um, understanding that it's definitely part of the process. So it shouldn't be anything you'd be alarmed with. Will the fruits and vegetable juice have the same benefits as eating salads? I ask because of GI related issues that flare up after starting a salad and certain fruits. Um, they won't have the same exact uh, benefits, mainly because when you're juicing them, you're removing the fiber from the um, from the fruits. I mean, from the fruits and vegetables. So you know they can be very beneficial with helping with the GI issue. But ultimately, you know, you want to understand what the triggering foods are for you. That way, you can strategically add other foods and build to build up and correct the issue that's going on inside there. But simply avoiding fruits and vegetables is never going to be the answer. It's going to be more so related to eliminating the ones that are stimulating this type of reaction, building the system up, and understanding which ones are more tolerable that's causing less of a reaction, and allow those to 
uh, take its place. But adding juice to the diet, uh, it can still have the same effect depending on, on the juices that you're consuming. So just uh, be more mindful of how you approach it. And it's always important to have a strategy that works with um, what you're trying to do. But from what I'm looking at now, it's more so finding the more fruits and vegetables that are, are going to be... Um, that, that are going to work more in your, flip, in your favor when it comes to less stimulation and allowing for you to continue through it without any um, disruption. Um, here we go. What causes the diastolic number to increase? It, it varies for many different things. Um, sometimes it's directly related to kidney issues and things like that. Uh, but one thing is when you start focusing on the elimination efforts, which, we, which we're going to be talking about more next week, you start to understand more about what potential things can trigger it because that's a bigger conversation that, 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 that needs a lot more attention. So next week, elimination efforts, this is going to help touch on that idea to, to give you better understanding because if you're someone that's having a higher diastolic number and that number is just stubborn, you know, it's related a lot more to some elimination things. And we'll talk about it a little bit more tightly next week. That way, um, you can just start packaging everything together and start moving forward in the right direction with enough information to, you know, dot your I's, cross your T's, and understand exactly uh, what's actually uh, uh, um, helping or what's not helping. Some vegan foods have more sodium. That's totally correct. A lot of them has, has a lot more sodium in it, mainly because they got to get it to taste a certain type of way. So, um, you know, that's a lot of different things. Uh, Miss Davis, who decorated and cleaned your house? Uh, I did actually. I decorated everything that's inside of it. Uh, I hope that's a good thing. Um, and yeah, this is a manly touch inside. I got some great artwork inside that, and it's part of the aesthetics of like uh, my home. I, I try to make my home as aesthetically pleasing as I can because, as you see, I'm always in my room because technically it's bedtime. I like to be in my bed around this time, but um, you know, it's part of just my lifestyle and things that I do. Uh, what else we see? Any uh, any other questions? Feel free to drop them in. I don't want to hold y'all too long unless y'all got some uh, good questions that I need to answer, and um, that way we we'll go through the whole process. Miss Diane Allen, I must say I'm not sluggish in the morning. A lot more energy. Yes, I definitely seen some of the um, the blood pressure readings that you put up, and those are good numbers that you that you that you're showing. And of course, like when you start improving your circulation and getting your blood pressure regulated, now these nutrients, these vitamins, these minerals, they're gonna they're gonna allow for the cells to function at a higher level. You're gonna see that boost in energy, that boost in, in your elimination efforts, and your body just gonna feel like it's able to hit a second gear. And a lot of people just haven't been able to experience that in a long time. So understanding that when you start getting in this process and you start feeling better, you're going to be more inclined to like continue to do these same things because it's nothing as good. Nothing feels like feeling good in the morning and feeling all this good energy, especially when you've been feeling down lately. So, you know, keep up the good work with that. Just continue to um, pound away. And that way you could just make sure that you're um, on point when it comes down to um, just what you're doing. And, you know, I, one thing I, I definitely want to touch on again is that you know, I love the fact that everyone that's posted in a group, you know, they're starting to see a lot of results. There's a few people that aren't really getting where they want to be at yet, but understanding that you just want to keep pounding through the process. And that leads me to another section. As a matter of fact, I'm going to touch on it in my book right here. Um, I'm going to touch on it real quick. Let me find a page where it's at. Because uh, this is one of the main things that's important when it comes down to just our overall lifestyle. And um, again, uh, for those of you that came in late, um, I just completed my, uh, my, 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 my book, The High Blood Pressure Breakdown. This is the proof copy right here. It's actually going on pre-sale in the next uh, day or so. That way you guys can actually be able to purchase a copy uh, for yourselves. But one thing I wanted to touch on was what's called the, the prerequisites of life. And basically, you know, your, your body needs certain things when it comes down to your overall health. And this going to, I'm going to chime into the reason I created this group. And that's gonna be about, right here, motivation. Motivation is one of the main reasons I created this group because this is one of the prerequisites of life. You need to find this motivation, especially when you're dealing with these type of issues. And I'm gonna read a passage out of my book. That way you can understand how this ties in to your overall health. Because when it comes down to the prerequisites of life, motivation falls in the same category as getting enough sunlight, um, having, having more, getting enough exercise and all those different things. So being motivated 
about the different challenges that you're going to face in life, it's going to help when it comes down to your overall well-being. So I'm going to read a quick passage out of the book. That way you can see how it all ties in. Motivated individuals are more likely to view challenges as opportunities for growth and maintain a positive mindset, leading to improved overall well-being. Motivation is closely linked to productivity and success in various areas of life, such as work, education, and personal pursuits. When individuals are motivated, they are more likely to put, put in the effort, stay committed, and take proactive steps towards their goals. This leads to increased productivity, accomplishments, and a sense of personal achievement. Motivation is often associated with a positive mindset and emotional well-being. That's just one of the biggest things. When it comes down to your health, the emo your emotional well-being is one of the key factors. You gotta, it got to all be there in order for you to even move forward. When individuals are motivated, they tend to experience higher level of optimism, self-confidence, and self-esteem. Motivation helps in managing stress, maintaining a sense of purpose, and experiencing greater overall happiness and satisfaction. Being motivated fuels personal growth and development. It drives individuals to seek new experiences, learn new skills, and expand their knowledge and capabilities. Motivated individuals are more likely to engage in continuous learning, take on challenges, and explore their potential, leading to self-improvement and a sense of personal growth. When you're motivated in what you're doing and what you're pursuing, this is a driver, especially when you start to, to taste a bit of success in the things that you're doing. So understanding that motivation is another prerequisite of life, especially when you're dealing with chronic issues and you need to create a lifestyle change in order to turn things around. And in the high blood pressure breakdown, I talk about all those prerequisites of life to help you better understand the full spectrum of your overall health. And again, when it comes down to this group, it's not just about blood pressure. It's about lifestyle changes for your overall health. Because in order to get control of your blood pressure, you must improve your overall health and start building yourself up in order to just in, in, in order to just build your body up to the level that it needs to be to maintain and take care of its daily function. So um, the high blood pressure breakdown, we go over all those different things. And um, for those of us that are in the group, I'll make sure that I put a link in here for those of us that want to purchase a copy. And that way you can um, continue to understand in a deeper, um, to gain a deeper understanding of those things that contribute to blood pressure issues. And um, just continue to work to solve the problem. I've been working on this book for about, about two years now and I finally actually got it done. And it's ready to, um, ready to be uh, released. Uh, congratulations on being a Superman. Your house looks great. You can be a decorator. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, the fresh fruits in the morning is working fantastic for me, but my blood pressure is a bit stubborn. So, Miss Sandra, the main thing is, is continue to understand, you know, those, um, those different factors. Because, again, sometimes it, it takes more than just the nutrients. The areas of elimination may become a bigger factor because now you got to eliminate those things that are in the way that's not allowing the, the fruits, the vegetables, or the nutrients in general to do what they need to do. So that's the next challenge that we're going to work on. And um, that way you can continue to get there. I just realized I didn't have any withdrawal symptoms from not drinking my, my one cup of coffee. That's a good thing, Ms. Farrell. Um, not having any withdrawal symptoms, especially after coming up with coffee, that's a good thing. Continue to monitor it and document that. That way you can understand what you were doing throughout this process and, you know, continue to um, move forward in the right direction. I don't have high blood pressure, but I listen to you to prevent it. I got high in 2016. I was so upset. I calmed down and it just disappeared. Oh, there it is. I calmed down and it went down. So that was definitely something that was stress related. And one thing about stress is this. Although stress is rooted in all diseases, it's not necessarily the cause of things like high blood pressure. It can be a trigger. It can cause the blood pressure to spike and, you know, to be, go all haywire. But once you get it under control, it, it goes back down to a more manageable position. But those people that are chronically stressed and then they have those bad habits on top of it or they have higher, a high blood pressure, now your blood pressure is already high. You find yourself being chronically stressed. 
Now you're going to see spikes in the blood pressure. And this is where the strokes, the aneurysms, the heart attacks, and all those things start to stem from. So it's really important that if you have high, you have high blood pressure, it's important that you tap into those stress elements. And again, inside the high blood pressure breakdown, and even in, the cha- in, this, in this group, we're going to go through those different challenges as well. But we talk about all those things inside of this book here. It's um, 250 pages where we're talking about the tactics and strategies of getting rid of high blood pressure. This is not just talking about taking the blood pressure reading and uh, you know the basic stuff. This is filled with tactics and strategies to help you understand how to regain control of your blood pressure and eliminate the need for pharmaceutical medication. The same tactics and strategies that I talk about inside of our community or inside of on, 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 on my reels, on my short form content, on my YouTube channel, These are all bundled and packaged up in here for you to be able to learn and understand how to approach it. You'll be able to document your journey, um, be able to um, guide yourself through this whole process and gain a better understanding of blood pressure issues and improve your overall lifestyle to take control and prevent the manifestation of any of these chronic issues. Um, Keep moving through. Can you get your can you get my book on Amazon? Unfortunately not. Um, I, I don't have it listed on Amazon. Uh, reason being because Amazon has a whole bunch of other things that's going on. But it's not listed on Amazon at the moment until um, I can figure out a deal or, or should I say um, so I can figure out what's best for for my for myself through this process. Currently, the book is going to go on pre-sale uh, in the coming days. If you if you purchased um, the seven-day plant-based, um, I'm sorry, if you purchased the seven-day fruit and salad challenge, you had the opportunity to purchase the book, the pre-sale book then. But what I'm going to do inside of the group, I'm going to list the link for the book. That way you can purchase it. But all of the books are going to start getting shipped out on the 24th which is, I don't know, I think like a week and a half from now, it all start to get shipped out and go from there. So yeah, you can't get the book on Amazon at the moment. Everything's coming directly from me and they'll go on pre-sale in the next day or so and you'll start to see the link popping up here and there. Um, do you still have the outside restaurant? Yep, I still have it. Unfortunately, I haven't been there in the last week myself, mainly because I've been trying to get this part taken care of. I finally got this done. Now I can start pouring some energy back into my restaurant and um, continue doing the, um, the things, helping people in the health promoting uh, areas uh, through that through that way. Uh, greetings, do the fruit have uric acid? Uh, I think uh, it probably should be um, <clears throat> a better approach with just worrying about the uric acid in the fruit. It's more so understanding what actual issue that you're uh, that you're dealing with that you're trying to overcome. Uh, looking forward to the elimination challenge. Yes, uh, Stephanie. The elimination challenge is going to be um, it's going to be something that's very very important when it comes down to tying everything together because again, it's not all about just eating more fruits and vegetables. You got to understand the other pathways. When you understand these other pathways, it's going to bring everything together. It's going to be like the oh okay, I get it now. And now on top of applying fresh fruits and vegetables for your vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, now you're eliminating all the other toxic foods or the other things that could be preventing these nutrients from taking the place that they need or or, fish, or or doing the things that they need. So it's just about putting the blocks on top of each other and building on your lifestyle to uh, continue to work in the right direction. Uh, let's see. Whatever. Any other questions, feel free to drop them in. Thank you guys for contra- con- congratulating me on the, on the book. I appreciate it. Like, again, I've been working on it for quite some time. And, um, you know, it's just, um, it's just been, been a blessing to be able to just put this information inside of this book. Because um, I wrote quite a few e-books and put those things together. But uh, this uh, hardcover book has really been um, something I've been working on to, to actually just provide uh, my audience and my, 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 my people with just to help them just continue to move through it. I made sure that I made it a good read, a motivating read, and a powerful tool to help people just continue to stay focused. Because the last thing you want to do is pick up a book and it be boring. And, you know, it's just a drag. But I made sure that I made it motivated. Like, for instance, here, uh, I, I wake up feeling refreshed and well-rested. This is inside of the sleep portion of the book. So inside of the book, I have some affirmations throughout that will help just keep you focused on the challenge and affirm yourself in the strategies that you're actually starting to implement. Because one thing about it, you can sit here and read something and kind of like pound it in your head, 
But, you know, you want to affirm yourself through this process and understand that the tactic and strategy that you're, that, you're up, that, that you're doing and you're trying to implement. That way you can find success on the journey. And then also after each, um, after each uh, section inside of the book, I have a small area where you can journal at as well to write about what you learned, what you picked up, the things that you need to work on. That way you don't have to go back and run through the book you could just go to okay i'm working on my sleep section now i have a place where i wrote down my notes i need to understand that these are my problems a through b a b c these are my problems this is what i need to work on and now you could just start focusing on that particular area and start implementing those strategies that those sleep hygiene um tactics and things like that so it's, it's a tool and for anyone dealing with high blood pressure, this is a tool that's going to help you get to the root cause of it and ultimately just overcome the challenge and get off the pharmaceutical medication. So I, I greatly appreciate you guys and um, go from there. Miss Sylvia, it says I, I missed your question. I apologize. Um, I'm going to see if I can go up and catch it real quick. And then that's going to be the last one I take before I get up out of here. Um, uh, let's see if I see it. I don't see it. Miss Sylvia, I apologize. If you DM me, I promise I'll try to look for it so I can answer it. But I don't see it inside, and I probably have to keep scrolling. Oh, here it is. When I eat chicken or eggs, I tend to cough up mucus. Does that mean I'm allergic to these foods? Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting question, Miss Sylvia. Uh, understand this. Chicken and eggs are not necessarily part of your, your natural diet. And uh, there's a couple ways you can identify this. Like, I'm not going to go on a whole vegan trip or a, plant, a whole food plant-based trip. But understand that chicken and eggs are not part of your, your natural diet. Now, if you're coughing up chick, if you're coughing up mucus after consuming chicken or eggs, you have to understand your body language and what your body is saying to you. Now, this could be a sign of just outward rejection that your body just doesn't want to deal with this at the moment or deal with... Um, you know, the, the additional toxins that are coming into the system. Because when your body creates mucus, it's trying to eliminate something. The mucus is there. The mucus is not the problem. It's what the body is trying to get rid of through the mucus that's actually uh, of concern. Because the body creates mucus to get rid of toxins and it expels the mucus. And the toxins get caught up in the mucus and it all gets pushed out. So understanding if you're being triggered by chicken and eggs and things like that, these animal-based products, it might be time to actually dial back and eliminate them from your diet for a period of time or indefinitely to understand exactly what's going on because it seems like you know that, okay, I eat chicken and eggs and then boom, this happens. So it might be time to just not eat chicken and eggs and see what happens then. Does your body move in a more health-promoting direction or like what does your body say to you then? So understanding that body language is... Um, important to listen to many people have lost touch of listening to their body your body's screaming at you and telling you different things in the form of side effects of mucus congestion you know all these different things but we're not actively listening to our body say don't give me this i don't want this every time you give me eggs i'm going to give you this and we see this but we're not adhering to what our body's saying so it'd be a good time to actually dial back and check that issue. So I would suggest that you move away from the chicken and eggs, work on improving your lifestyle in other areas, and see how your body responds afterwards. Because um, clearly, if every time you consume this, it's just giving you this type of outward reaction. And um, uh, it's, it's just basically your body saying, don't give this to me anymore, and you go from there. Um, after I consume sugar, I have plenty of mucus. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, depending on what type of sugar you're consuming, uh, that's something that you want to be mindful of because again, your body will, um, your body will respond in a certain way and an excessive amount of mucus is never a good thing. Like there's always going to be mucus in the body at some degree, at some point, because it's a protective, it's a defense mechanism. Like when you sneeze and like when you're sick, you get mucus all over the place. It's because your body is trying to pull out the stuff that's in it. So don't be afraid of mucus, but you don't want to promote mucus as well. So watching what you're eating, being mindful of it in those different areas, it's going to be able to just help you listen to your body, better understand it, and move away from those things that could be contributing to the issue. So with that being said, it's 10 o'clock. Uh, we've been on for about an hour and a half. 
And um, basically, I'm going to wrap up this session here. Um, I'm going to post a link for my book in the group between today and tomorrow. I definitely appreciate you guys if you want to support and pick up the book. It's definitely uh, something I've been working on for quite some time. And it's filled with some great information to help you guys continue on this journey for controlling your blood pressure. Um, the next challenge, I will open the gates for it starting Monday. That way, if you're, if you're interested in continuing to move forward with... Um, um, correcting the blood pressure issues. The gateway for the next challenge will be open on Monday. Uh, we will we'll be live tomorrow to do a follow-up for this challenge here as far as a few things that I want to wrap up with everyone there. But um, other than that, I expect to see everybody else in the next challenge continue to move forward. That way you can continue to just build on the issues that, on the strategies that you're already taking that you're already partaking in and just get your lifestyle in complete order. And um, that way you could just continue to live a health promoting lifestyle, work your way off of the pharmaceutical medications and just be more in control of your life. So with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you guys from tuning in and I'll see you tomorrow at uh, 830.